Video games have featured non-human heroes for decades. Foxes, apes, hedgehogs, they were all the go-to long before everything became gristle with a gun. However, the bullshark star of open world ARPG Maneater is different. She doesn't walk around on two feet, I doubt she's ever seen a minecart, and she resists any urge to crack wise. She doesn't speak at all in fact, I mean it is bad manners to talk with your mouth full of beach bum. But does this less cartoony shark have the legs slash fins to carry a whole game? Let this man eat a review explain the good, the bad and the chompy. And while you're here, why not subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun for more like this? Hopefully we can be your socially distant sunbathing substitute by adding a little shine to your life. Don't be like this lockdown ignoring loss. While Jaws Jr's methods are probably a bit much, there's no question that these people need to be taught a lesson. Paula Notes were bang on. She will chew you up. She'll chew everything up, actually. And she won't do it with a smile or a scowl. She'll do it purely because it's about survival. A growing bull shark doesn't see a cute seal, they see lunch. And if a barracuda is itching for a fight, it's kill or be killed. Maneater embraces Attenborough's ocean, not Pixar's. And even though there's no Ellen DeGeneres or human emotion, there's beauty in the underwater wildlife across the game's eight self-contained hub worlds. In order to thrive, you have to be ruthless. And that's a hurdle when you're staring at a bale of turtles. These adorable creatures aren't hurting anyone, but they've got a date with your stomach. It's the circle of life. I learned this quickly after I was tasked with controlling the catfish population in the first region. As a little pup, I reluctantly chowed down on my whiskered breakfast when an alligator came for me with the determination of, well, a, a hungry alligator. I properly shat myself. Although, underwater is probably the best place to do that. That brush with death was all I needed to turn me into a killing machine. It's a proper gore fest as you rip and tear with the enthusiasm of a child opening their presents on Christmas morning. As your prey's health drops to zero, a red cloud floats to the surface. To any onlookers, you're laying down a marker. This shark is not to be trifled with. That warning is in your head, of course, as a Mako won't let a little bit of blood deter them from having a pop. Silly Mako. Simply put, Maneater is the game that you've wanted since you were a kid. You're a shark and you wreak havoc. It's a lot of fun just being a shark. Well, when you're playing with a controller. The keyboard mapping just doesn't feel right, so hook up a pad before diving in. I don't want you to miss out on the joy of fluidly toing and froing in the water. Meandering along the bed of the Gulf Coast, swiveling your leathery hips from side to side like Anton Dubeck on a Blackpool dance floor is delightful. As large as the shark can become, it's somewhat graceful when you're not in battle. Obviously, when you're duking it out with a sperm whale or an orca, it's a little more intense. That crunch of razor sharp teeth on bone, that thunderous clap after clashing skulls, the sense of elation as their flesh goes down your gob. The pleasure you first derive from defeating an imposing fishy adversary is, I imagine, similar to how the upright lout feels after knocking out the one that looked at him funny in the local on a Saturday night. By the third or fourth time, these battles begin to lose their lustre tags, because like a brawl in an East End pub, altercations are over almost as quickly as you begin hammering the kill button. There are always bigger fish to fry though, and that's where your apex predators come in. Each level has a top dog. They come out to play after you've cleared the area of a number of its inhabitants. These peckish pescatarians will be out for your blood and would put up more of a fight than others, but it doesn't take long to learn that their downfall goes hand in hand with your persistence. Health is all around you in the form of smaller sea life, so if you take a couple of knocks from a big boy, just have a mid-fight snack and then go back at it. Once you figure this out, probably in the first half hour or so, these encounters aren't half as daunting and sadly lose that big boat feel. They're just a slightly tougher opponent, but not one that requires any extra reconnaissance. 
Regardless of what you're up against, combat is almost automatic. Hammer that bite button and you're on your way to victory. Still, you are a shark. So while the munching is fairly mindless, it does satiate hunger for a bit. Sad to say how we gotta coexist. Now how you gonna coexist with the shark? Shark just wanna do one thing. That's cute. Eat you. Eat you. And you out. What I do, I consider a sacred honor. Our bull shark's lack of empathy is understandable. It witnessed a callous hunter named Scaly Pete kill its mother for a television show. The TV show in question is called Maneater, and it stars the previously mentioned Peter, as well as his less than enthusiastic son Kyle, aboard a ship called the Cajun Queen. It's actually a really well-observed take on the deadliest catch format, chock full of cringy hashtags and bugs for upcoming episodes. Given that you're working towards vengeance on this reprehensible fisherman, more clips of Pete and his boy would have been welcome. The execution of the idea is superb, so infrequent use of the parody is a shame. Hunters aren't only found on the Cajun Queen though. You can also draw out lower level pursuers by consuming some bipedal mouth breathers. The more hunters you kill, the higher your infamy rank rises. GTA's wanted level basically. Gain a degree of notoriety and you'll coax out elite fisher folk who offer up upgrades once disposed of. The first few slip down easily, but once they catch on that they'll need a bigger boat, you'll need a bigger brain. Unlike the button mashing of underwater conflicts, humans require you to evade laser sights with constant ducking and diving and tail whipping projectiles back at them for maximum destruction. And while deckhands will fling everything they've got at you, you need to be careful of those brave souls that dive in for a closer look. There's a greater sense of achievement when you take on an army and win versus taking on a school of hammerheads. Because there's at least a sliver of strategy to it. I mean, it does still revolve around intermittent nibbling, of course. The majority of Maneater is that, really. Swim to an area, eat a set number of fish or humans in that area, and then get yourself to the next quest marker, which will no doubt involve even more flesh gobbling. Again, the actual doing is mostly enjoyable, you're a shark for Christ's sake, but no amount of smashing or thrashing can hide the repetition of missions. And it doesn't matter whether it's mandatory or not, every single quest orders you to destroy. You're destroying boats, you're destroying families by eating the people on the boats. You're destroying, uh, battered road signs, actually. While Maneater's protagonist is quite different to her anthropomorphic brothers and sisters of the 90s, she does share their lust for collectathons. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure I could hear the garbled nonsense of Banjo-Kazooie obliterating my eardrums all over again as I swam around bonking my nose on glowy boxes and oversized license plates. There's no real sense of pride for grabbing every little trinket because you just happen upon most. There are a handful that require a teeny bit of skill, but that's the exception rather than the rule. For the most part, it's optional busy work that serves its purpose of fattening up an otherwise lean game. I didn't collect every knickknack, but I got most and finished in just under 12 hours. You can choose to ignore this aspect of Maneater, but you would be getting even less game for your money. And the rewards are fairly worthwhile, I mean, you get to beef up your super-powered shark. Supercharged with gene-altering mutagens, the shark now has an asymmetric edge on the competition. Shark PG is a clever little marketing term that everyone associated with the game has been using pre-release. It doesn't quite work in my accent, so here's fellow RPS vidbud Matthew saying it. Matthew? Shark PG. See? Very clever. Although Maneater is more like your action game with RPG elements than a straight up role playing game. You can't choose the Paragon option to spare a great white after a monologue that pulls on your heartstrings. Nor can you romance a Marlin that wows you with magic tricks. If only. What it boils down to is evolving and upgrading. You gain nutrients through eating things, ofs, and by completing quests. This nourishment contributes to your overall level and helps you grow from a newborn pup all the way up to a massive megalodon. And if you do opt to kill a few hunters and grab a few collectibles on the way, you'll also be able to turn your shark into a bone armor wearing bioelectric organ having beast. 
Additions like bone teeth bump up your boat biting damage, while bioelectric teeth will release a jolt of electricity whenever you snap your jaw shut. The nutrients you've accumulated can be dumped into these upgrades, making you both tougher and more lethal. It's up to you to decide whether you want a shark that can do a mesmerizing pirouette or one that can shoot across the water like a bolt of lightning. Whatever you choose, know that a fully kitted out shark is a thing of beauty. A glorious weapon of mass destruction that takes no prisoners. Who wants a vanilla biter when you can choose to look like this? As long as you don't go into this assuming there are conversations with NPCs or branching paths in the open water, you'll have a pretty decent time with the RPG-ness of Maneater by transforming your shark into the Terminator. Yes. It's a shame it doesn't deliver on the promise of a natural world RPG. You can break from the arcade champathon to take in your surroundings during a relaxed Sunday swim. When undisturbed, the world of Maneater is really lovely. The yelps of wildlife echo through Sapphire Bay's gorgeous clear blue, providing the perfect soundtrack to your graceful glide along the rocky ocean floor. The occasional growls from nearby gators is all you need when you're paddling through Fawtic Bay's shallow amber paths, and see how the other half lives in the residential golden shores while the hum of the affluent reverberates overhead. Despite its repetition, spending a few hours in Maneater is soothing. There are new species to encounter and landmarks to visit. You do need to write the backstories for these areas, of course. Apart from a snappy quip from the narrator, you sadly won't learn an awful lot about what truly happened in Dead Horse Lake. I can't imagine it was all that pleasant, though. I mean, it's not called my alive and well pony lake now, is it? When I first heard about Maneater, my eyes lit up. An RPG that has you play as a shark that's determined to take down the man that killed your mother. In reality, it isn't exactly the revenge-driven narrative I was hoping for. The tale of Shark vs Shark Hunter often takes a back seat to your meals and mischief. And while knowing that everything in your path is relatively entertaining, this could have been more than swim to a point, consume everything that's breathing, repeat. Still, as I say, you are a shark, and that's alright I suppose. If you like this review of Maneater, then it would be lovely if you liked this video. Just click on that thumbs up button right there. If you're looking for more wonderful videos about other PC gaming goodness, hit subscribe. It's very close to the thumbs up button in case you're having a little poke around you can't see it. And to ensure you get notifications when new Rock Paper Shotgun videos go live, make sure you ring that bell. Wonderful. Now, RPS often gives you a little prize for getting this far into the video, and today is no different. So, here's an image of Anton Dubeck looking very happy about the fact that he got a mention in a review for a PC game about sharks. Thanks very much for watching, and we hope to see you again real soon, you absolute star.